In this lesson, we will learn how to combine functions. We will be adding them, subtracting them, and multiplying them. Please do not copy off of me. If you have a pencil in your hand, put it down. Let me remind you of the homework protocol. Here's the homework protocol. First, do the assignment by yourself as best you can. Then, check your answers using the answer key posted on Edmodo. Next, watch the video, like you're doing now, uh, just for the problems you got wrong or could not complete. No copying. Pencils down. Then, go back and redo the problems you got wrong uh, by yourself. So at no point should you be copying off the video. And at no point should you have a pencil in your hand while the video is playing. If you follow this procedure, you will learn the material and uh, you will be able to do it by yourself. If you copy off the video, you will learn very little and when you take the test or quiz, um, you will bomb it and that will be why. Anyway, back to the assignment. So to find function f plus function g. So here's function f, that's 3x squared plus 5x minus 8. Okay, and now we need to add function g. Function g is 2x squared plus 4x minus 9. Okay, so we're adding these two functions. <clears throat> when you're adding, the parentheses are not really doing anything. Okay, so you could erase them without changing the value of the expression. So, um, now we can go ahead and combine like terms. <clears throat> um, so, for example, uh, the 3x squared and the 2x squared, these are like terms together they make 5x squared. Alright, next we've got the 5x and the 4x. Together they make 9x. Finally, negative 8 and negative 9 together make negative 17. So that is the final answer for number 1. Okay, um, for number two, we have to do function g minus function f. Okay, so the order does matter. So function g first, 2x squared plus 4x <coughs> minus 9. So there's function g. Okay, now we need to do minus function f. And function f is 3x squared plus 5x minus 8. Okay, so this is function g minus function f. Now, unlike addition, we cannot just ignore the parentheses this time. When you're subtracting, um, you could erase the parentheses around the first uh, function. But the second function is being subtracted. So you have to remember to distribute the negative sign. And this is the most common mistake is forgetting this step. So you need to treat it uh, like there's a negative 1 in front, and you need to take that negative 1 and multiply it by everything. Okay, so that's going to give you negative 3x squared minus 5x plus 8. All right, so I'm just going to bring down the other 2x squared plus 4x minus 9. Now we can just uh, combine like terms. So we have our 2x squared and our negative 3x squared. Okay, if we put those together, that makes negative x squared. You know, it's like negative 1, but we don't put the 1. Next we have positive 4x and negative 5x. That's going to be negative x. Finally, we have negative 9 and positive 8. That makes 
negative 1. So this should be the final answer for number 2. All right, number three, we have f at two plus g at two. Well, um, let's see. Function f, once again, is three x squared plus five x minus eight. All right, so <clears throat> here's f of x right here, three x squared plus five x minus eight. Um, so this two inside the parentheses means we're gonna substitute two for these x's. So that's going to look like this. I have my 3, but instead of x squared, I'm going to have 2 squared. Anytime you're substituting for a variable, always use parentheses. So I have 3 uh, times 2 squared plus, uh, so I have 5x, but I'll put 5 times 2, and then minus 8. Okay, so right here, this is f at 2. Okay, and if I wanted to, maybe I'll just put a bracket around this. Okay, because that's one thing. Uh, next, we're supposed to add this with g at 2. All right, so I'll do function g in red. All right, so here's function g. So, um, again, so instead of writing 2x squared, I'm going to write 2 times 2 squared. So I'm just substituting the x's with 2. And then I've got 4x, so that'll be 4 times 2. And then we've got our minus 9. So we need to add the expression on the left with the expression on the right. Now you should have the skill uh, to evaluate all of this by hand. And uh, so that would look like this. Um, so this is order of operations you have to square things first so this would be um, 4 right here and then you know what maybe I'll do it a little bit faster than that alright so you know 2 squared you know that this is 4 okay so this is going to be 3 times 4 so this will be 12 uh, plus 10 minus 8 then again over here you know this is 4 so this is 2 times 4, so this will be 8 um, plus 8 minus 9. Okay, so that means uh, 12 plus 10, that's 22. Um, 22 minus 8 is 14. So that means over here we have 14. So basically f at 2 is 14. Okay, and over here we have 8 plus 8 is 16, um, minus 9 um, is going to give us 7. Okay, so we're supposed to take f of 2 and add it with g of 2. So f of 2 is 14, g of 2 is 7, and then uh, we add those up and get 21. So your final answer should be a positive 21. Um, now I should also point out to you though that um, we should be able to do all of this in the calculator as well. Okay, if you have your TI-30XS MultiView, a pretty amazing device if you ask me, I could type in all this blue stuff um, honestly, I could really type in the entire expression, the blue and the red, but um, it fills up so much of the screen that um, it's harder to keep track of what you're doing. Um, but if you, so if you were going to use your calculator, I might do the blue and then add it with the red. So the blue is, uh, you know, so you could do 3 times 2 squared. So you can type it in just like it looks right here, plus 5 times 2 okay minus 8 okay there's your 14 right there and uh, similarly I'm just gonna move this over here out of the way um, okay so similarly 
we could do the red. Um, so that's going to be 2 times 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 9. Okay, and there's the 7. All right, and then you could easily add your 14 and your 7. Did I put 27 here? <clears throat> 21 is what I meant. Okay, um, so if, uh, if you're very bad at arithmetic, use a calculator. That's the moral of the story. Anyway, um, moving on. So, for number four, we're going to do 2 times f of x minus g of x. Okay, so. Alright, so here's f of x again. So here I go. 2 times f of x. So that's 3x squared plus 5x minus 8. Uh, and then minus g of x. So that's going to be minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 9. Notice how I use parentheses around the functions. You should too. So um, on this one I'm going to distribute this 2. So that's going to give me 6x squared plus 10x minus 16. And on this one I need to distribute minus 1. Okay, this negative sign. So that's going to give me negative 2x squared minus 4x uh, plus 9. And then I can combine like terms. So the 6x squared and the negative 2x squared go together. So that's going to be um, 4x squared. Okay, and then the 10x and the minus 4x are going to go together so that's going to be 6x alright and then the negative 16 and the positive 9 are going to go together and that's going to make negative 7 so that will be your final answer for number 4 All right, in number five, we will multiply function h times function g. Here are the functions h and g. So um, we will do function h, which is 3x squared, times function g, which is x squared plus 5x. Now, traditionally, when we have a monomial times a binomial, we don't bother with the parentheses around the monomial. And the way we handle it is we do the distributive property. So we will do this times this and this times that. All right, when you multiply, um, remember this is like a 1x squared. You are multiplying, so this is 3 times 1. 3 times 1 is 3, so we're going to have a 3 x squared times x squared is x to the fourth power. Okay, now I will do the 3x squared times 5x. 3 times 5 is 15. So I will have a plus 15. x squared times x is x to the third power. So this will be your answer for number 5. Okay. All right, so if we want to multiply 2 times function g times function f, that's going to look like this. So we have 2 times function g, which is x squared plus 5x. And then times function f, which is 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Well, if I were you, I would go ahead and uh, do the distributive property um, just over function g. And so that's going to be 2x squared plus 10x. 
Okay, and then we'll just bring down function f. Okay, now it's time to multiply these together. So remember, when you multiply functions, you are doing the distributive property. But in this case, we'll have to distribute twice. First, we will distribute the 2x squared by multiplying three times. So here we go. If I do um, 2x squared times 2x squared, that's going to be 4x to the fourth power, right? 2 times 2 is 4. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth power. Now, uh, 2x squared times 3x, 2 times 3 is 6. So that'll be plus 6. Now, x squared times x is x to the third power. And 2x squared times negative 5, well, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. And then you just still have your x squared, because this one doesn't have any, uh, any more x's. So that's our first distributive property. Um, then we will do the distributive property again, this time with the 10x. So we will multiply the 10x times everything like this. All right, 10 times 2 is 20, so this will be, oh, you know what? Um, I could have continued like I started to. You know what, maybe I will. I will. All right, so 10x times 2x squared. 10 times 2 is 20. Um, so that's going to be 20. And x times x squared is going to be x to the third power. So I'm going to have 20x to the third power. So what I want to do is, um, I could write 20x to the third power and just make a long string like that off to the side. And then, but later I'm going to be combining my like terms. I find it more convenient to line up my like terms as I go. So uh, if I have 20x to the third power, it's easier for me if I put it here because I'll be adding them later. Um, now, 10x times 3x. 10 times 3 is 30. x times x is x squared, so that's 30x squared. So again, I would like to put that here, 30x squared. Um, and finally, 10x times negative 5. 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. And then there's the x because this has no x's. Um, finally, you are going to want to combine your like terms. OK, so I'm just going to combine my like terms now. Uh, 4x to the fourth power, there are no like terms. So I'm just going to bring that down. 26x to the third power. 30 and negative 10 makes 20, so 20x squared. And then just bring down your negative 50x. All right, so this should be your answer for number 6. OK, and I'm going to stop this video here. We'll call it part 1. I will put. Um, because we're switching gears anyway, starting with number seven, we'll be doing binomial expansion using Pascal's triangle, which is a completely different concept. So let's put that in a different video.